Nobody would have believed it, but this tool I built can detect live current behind walls and even suppositories, but only after they've been used. Could it really be true? This is a classic situation. You're about to drill into a wall and someone points out how risky it could be. If you're not familiar with your electrical system, you might accidentally drill into a conduit that contains live wires. Not only could you damage the installation, but you could also seriously hurt yourself. That's where my clone steps in with a DIY solution. A homemade device designed to detect live wires through the wall. But, does it actually work? It seems like it does. But watch the video because I'll show you exactly how to build a zero-cost phase detector. And at the end, I'll also show you how to make a more professional version of the same tool. In this video, I'll show you how I built two types of tools for detecting live electrical wires inside walls. I start by building a custom antenna made from tinned copper wires. Don't worry about the shape, it's purely aesthetic. You can also make it in a round spiral form, it will work just as well. The small antenna has been completed. The PCB will also serve as the base for mounting the 9 volt battery. Now I'll build the entire circuit on this strip board. I'll insert all the components and use solder to make direct connections between the component pins. The circuit is very simple and will be assembled on this perf board, where I'll attach the battery using double-sided tape. Now I'm going to install the battery clip directly onto the PCB. This way, if you don't want to use the tool, you can simply disconnect the clip from the battery. Now I can solder the antenna directly onto the PCB. Alternatively, you can install a two-pin terminal block, which allows for easier antenna replacement in case it breaks, or if you want to try a different design. I chose to tin and solder the antenna directly to keep the circuit as simple as possible. This is the test button, which is used to supply power to the circuit. You can use any type of push button, as long as it has a normally open contact. Now I'm going to install two more key components of the circuit. A green LED and a 1000 ohm resistor. Do not trim the resistor leads. You can use them as jumper wires to simplify the connections. The blue LED and the 1000 ohm resistor have been installed. Now I'll proceed with placing the three BC547 NPN transistors. These components are the core of the device. I'll explain how they work in just a moment. Now I'll show you a technique for creating traces using solder, although it's generally better to use copper wire for the connections. I chose to use this method just for fun, but it's a technique that has been commonly used over the years. Now I'm going to solder the remaining two BC547 transistors. The only step left is connecting the yellow LED to the collector of the third transistor, and then I'll finish the last few traces. To complete the circuit, I'll connect the antenna to the emitter of the first transistor. The live wire detector is now fully assembled. 
Before testing it, let me briefly explain how the circuit works. The circuit diagram is very simple. It consists of three BC547 transistors. When the antenna comes close to an AC voltage source, the first transistor amplifies the very weak signal. The other two transistors further amplify it in cascade. The resulting signal can vary between 0 and 3 volts. It works quite well as a tool, but it's not very reliable. There are too few components to provide an accurate response, and sometimes it may fail to correctly detect the presence of a live wire. Still, it's a circuit worth exploring, especially because of how easy it is to build. I also made a more professional version for you. It's the same device, but this time built on a real PCB. I designed the circuit using KiCad, and then, step by step, I had fun creating a nearly professional-looking PCB using a CNC machine. The first step is to create the traces using a single flute metal milling bit. This small end mill operates on a very fine portion of its tip. The next step is to protect the board with a green solder mask resin. I use an aluminum spatula to spread the resin evenly and create a uniform coating. To cure the resin quickly, I use a UV lamp. In about 30 minutes, the PCB is fully covered. Unfortunately, we can't isolate the pads during the resin application, so that step comes later. I use a special engraving bit to remove the resin from the solder pads so they're ready for soldering. Now it's time for the drilling phase, using a 0.8mm drill bit. Finally, I use a 0.8mm corn bit to mill the pockets and fully cut out the PCB, leaving small tabs to keep it anchored during the final cut. Now it's time to insert all the through-hole components, the 1000 ohm resistor, the test button, the orange LED, the two-pin terminal block, the three BC547 transistors, and finally, the last terminal block. The next step is to solder all the components and trim the excess leads. The PCB is now complete. The power clip is the same one used in the low-cost version, but this time I won't solder it directly to the PCB. Instead, I'll connect it to the two-pin terminal block. The antenna will be built using the same method shown at the beginning of the video, but in this version, it features two leads that will be inserted into a two-pin header connector. As the final step, I'm going to secure the 9V battery to the PCB using two zip ties. The most famous way to check if a 9V battery is still charged is using your tongue. But don't do it. Even if it feels like a fizzy candy with an electric twist, it's definitely not recommended. It works very well. In terms of performance, it's not significantly better than the first version, apart from the improved aesthetics. As I mentioned earlier, detection isn't always reliable due to the circuit's simplicity. This small device was made purely for demonstration purposes and to illustrate the concept of signal amplification using transistors. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like the style and format, I can create many more projects like this. Just give the video a thumbs up using a sculptor's hammer. And I'll see you soon in the next one. Take care and happy tinkering.